This has become a point for control in the commercial heart of Bangkok. Much of the violence has been centered around a park that borders the protesters' camp. The security forces fired rubber bullets and tear gas as they tried to advance. But protesters are said to be preparing for a long siege and are determined not to leave. In another show of defiance, the demonstrators set fire to a bus as they retreated. Government troops have not yet managed to seal all the roads in the area. And an army spokesman has said the security forces are not planning to force the protesters out of their fortified rally site. But overnight, the authorities shut down the electricity supply to the area as they tried to tighten their stranglehold and reclaim the centre of the Thai capital. The government is under pressure to end the protests which have paralysed Bangkok since the middle of March. The protesters want the Prime Minister to dissolve Parliament and call fresh elections. But in this volatile atmosphere, any such agreement seems a long way off. Peter Biles, BBC News. Live pictures coming to us all the time. Let's just dip into those and we'll talk to our correspondent, Alistair Leithhead. So, Alistair, essentially Bangkok is quite a dangerous place to be right now. Very much so, yes. I'm just walking back in what's uh, at this time of day on a Friday, usually absolutely jam-packed with traffic. It's uh, on the edge of the financial district, this road now, uh, walking down the salon. It's completely abandoned. There are troops lining a bridge overlooking huge plume of smoke, which is at some distance away from where I am on the other side of that park that uh, the Freedom was talking about in his report. Um, the, the, the idea of the military being here is to blockade, as you say, the, the protest site. Uh, to try and pressure them to leave. But they've been much more occupied with trying to deal with protesters attacking them now that they've come into the city centre. They came in, they set up their blockade, they started to pressure into the red shirt, uh, and then all of a sudden other protesters gathered and started coming in and putting their own barricades up behind them once again, confusing the picture and putting the army, army under all the stress. Over the last two hours, we've been standing watching one of these standoffs between the, um, the protesters and the military. Um, the military will be there, it will be calm, suddenly the protesters are kind of more sense, will start cheering and start moving forward. Uh, maybe a firework, a big rocket firework was fired straight at the soldiers to miss them, but they responded by then opening fire with uh, live ammunition. Um, all of that was in the air that we could see. But these troops, are, some of them are very young and very nervous. You can see how afraid they are of what they're doing, and they're moving forward and they, they, the rounds they were shooting were taking out street lights and, and buildings at the side of the road. It wasn't completely controlled. Um, but the protesters go back, and then they gather again, get the momentum, and then push forward. So they're not making any progress in terms